What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video review and today I'll be taking a look at the Thermaltake CTE 750. Now this case has been out for a little while, it did come out around May, June this year, right before Computex. Now was sent this case to do a build and a review, but the build was for the Thermaltake Computex booth. So my main focus was to get that build done. I didn't have time to do the review, so I've now come back to do the review on the case. I was sent another completely empty case because I also wanted to showcase the build uh, in this video on what I did for their Computex booth. Now this case, I really do like. It has a lot going for it. It's got a reasonable price. It's got good features around the rear, good cable management, good radiator support, not just for custom cooling, but also for all-in-one cooling support if you have multiple all-in-one coolers for say your CPU loop and for your GPU loop. And it's got a lot of storage options as well. So let's jump in and take a look. The CTE 750 is big, supports a heap of water cooling, and everything you'd expect from a full tower chassis from Thermaltake. CTE centralized thermal efficiency is what they've come up with. Technically, this isn't anything new. The case comes with a fixed rotated motherboard orientation with all motherboard IO coming out the top. The idea behind this is intake from each side and bottom while exhausting out the top. One possible advantage of this is we now have five possible sides for intake or exhaust, left, right, bottom, side, and top. I'll touch base on the rotated layout later on. The CT750 comes in two models, the Air and the TG for tempered glass. The difference being the Air has a full mesh front where the TG has a bit of tempered glass at the front while being semi-open. That's the only difference. You'll also find both of these models come in either black or white, making it a total of four SKUs all up. Three RGB 140mm fans are included, which are the CT140 and a two-pack retails for about 40 US dollars. To me, for a chassis like this, I would not include any at all. The user is clearly going to need to purchase more fans and are either forced to buy more of the same brand or ditch the included ones and buy their own. I think dropping a few bucks off the chassis price would be better as nearly every product image on their website shows the chassis decked out with at least 10 fans or more. For external aesthetics, I would say this is a mix between the Thermaltake View 51 and with the rotator layout from their tower series. The CT750 is a boxy case, but we do find some angles here and there to modernize the look. Case dimensions come in at 566 high, 321 wide, and 595 deep, making it nearly a square when looking front on. The case is made up of steel for the internal frame, radiator brackets, pump mount, and top and left side cover panels. The rest is made from plastic, which includes the top panel, right front panel, the feet, as well as the dust filters. Tempered glass can be found on the main side, as well as on the front for the TG model of this chassis. These are four millimeters thick, and on the white, they are 100% clear, and on the black, they are a medium to dark tint. Both side panels clip on and off with the help of a small tab at the back. I just love how once pushing the side panel off, it doesn't continue to just fall off, but it stops. There's also no secondary locking option for them, but I feel once they are on, they are super tight. I do appreciate that the front isn't completely solid with airflow in mind on each side and can clearly see there is plenty of room here for intake. But in saying that, being glass on the front, you'd expect to be able to see into the case at your components, but that isn't the case. Due to the dust filter, it can be removed, but then we're left with large gaps along each side. On the air version, the whole front panel is replaced with a metal vented grille that matches the rest of the chassis. One thing I do like is how Thermaltake have gone about attaching all the grills and covers. Nearly every panel is segmented and detaches by itself with no screws. For example, the front is actually made up of three detachable parts. The whole front can come off in one go, or you can just pull the glass off only to then access the removable dust filter. Same goes for the top and rear of the chassis as well. You don't need to be pulling off the whole top or complete front part to access dust filters like seen on other cases. Speaking of dust filters, a total of six can be found in the CT750. The left or rear dust filter is magnetic, which holds it in behind the metal grill. The bottom dust filter slides out from the main side, but I will admit this was very tight to get in and out. And did you notice the filter also spells CTE? The top filter is clipped in under the top grill. On the back side panel, two magnetic dust filters can be found here, one for the PSU area and one for the side radiator location. And the last dust filter, is the front which is clipped in behind the glass. 
The case is also raised off the ground a good 31mm which will help for intake if using fans at the bottom. Chassis IO is found at the top right towards the front and probably isn't my preferred location but that's just me. Being such a large case you'll have a bit of reach accessing ports and the power button. Plenty of IO can be found here which includes 4 USB 3.0 type A, a USB C 3.2 gen 2 port with separate mic and headphone jacks. You'll also find a power button with a built in LED, hard drive LED, then a reset button at the other end which is separate for no accidental presses. Inside the chassis and we can see straight away just how much room the CTE 750 offers. With the PSU in the back chamber there is a lot of usable space here. As I said earlier the motherboard tray is rotated 90 so all IO shoots up. Basically making motherboard width now up and down and motherboard length going left to right. Motherboard support you'll have no issues with ATX, EATX as well as workstation boards. With IO facing up, routing external cables to the motherboard is a little bit tricky, for example keyboard, mouse and display cables. They first need to be fed into this grommet at the back, then up and into either the two holes that align with the motherboard. With a test cable run, I can see I've already eaten up roughly 500mm of cable length just inside the case. I feel longer cables will definitely be needed or cable extensions. Plenty of cable grommet holes are dotted around the motherboard tray with two rows of two covering 24 pin, internal USB and SATA ports. I had no issues with any of the boards I tested except for EATX boards with right angle 24 pin connectors are tight if wanting to use the closest cable cutout. For EPS two very large cutouts can be found on what I would call this ledge which are out of sight when looking straight on into the case. One issue I can see here is this area could get tight when using a side mounted radiator or fans. I'll touch base on this area when I cover custom cooling. For bottom motherboard connectors, another large cable cutout can be found for front panel IO headers, fans and so on. But my biggest gripe with these grommets are they're all black. This is just my personal opinion here, but for a white chassis, I feel this could be at least grey. This also goes with the PCI slot covers as well. Being black, I just feel these stand out too much. I also noticed a few other cable routing holes hiding around the place which are always welcomed. One here, one here, one here, and one here, and three more for helping route front fans. GPU clearances you'll have no issues here, with the rotated layout your video card now sits vertically by default. Clearance here is 425mm to the bottom of the chassis, or 400mm with 25mm fans installed at the bottom. Waterblock GPUs will also have plenty of room here even with the thick radiator and fans installed at the bottom. GPU width is up to 190mm and this 4080 with the TT block still has plenty of room to spare and CPU air cooler height is up to 196mm. Vertical GPU can also be found in the chassis, technically the GPU is already vertical due to the rotated layout but in a traditional case layout the CT750 offers what we would call a vertical GPU bracket but in this scenario it simply rotates the GPU so we can see the complete fan side of the GPU. To go down this route, the PCI module needs to be unscrewed by four screws and drop down to remove. One thing to note here is the PCI module can only be removed without a motherboard installed in the chassis. Included in the packaging is the GPU bus support bar. I absolutely love this and this thing is built like a brick from solid steel. There are so many cases out on the market that offer vertical GPU options and don't provide this type of bus support. With the PCI module removed, this bus support bar is screwed into the side like so. There are three positions for this bracket which allow your GPU to be closer or further away from the motherboard. One thing to note here is the riser cable is not included. I think that's okay considering the GPU is already vertical and by adding this bracket we're only making a slight change. Another really nice feature is the included bracket supports both 90 and 180 degree thermal tape riser cables. This is neat and I've never seen that before. Recommended riser length is 200mm and the one I used is the TT Premium PCIe 4 200mm 90 degree adapter. Once your riser cable is installed onto the bracket, we can now spin this bracket 90 and is dropped in from the top and screwed back in. This time your motherboard can already be installed while doing this part. Now with the GPU installed, there is no movement here at all and this setup is just rock solid. There's plenty of room for accessing your GPU screws for installing and removing. Another nice touch is this whole assembly can slide left or right for fine tuning. Around the back chamber, you can see there's just a heap of room here. Stock cables come nicely routed and I had no issues with the length of these. Six plastic clips with velcro tie downs are found and if you don't require these, they can be unscrewed and removed. I also found more cable tie down points which I've never seen before. These are more a dome with holes in each corner. This allows for cable ties to go either vertically or horizontally. As on traditional cable tie mounts, they can only be fed through vertically. 
More holes for cable tight ends can be found along the left edge at the rear to help cable manage front mounted fans. The PSU is installed at the back at the bottom and clearance here is pretty much unlimited. Even with this tough power 1650 watt unit installed, you can see just how much free room is left. The rubber pads at the bottom are also a nice touch. Moving on to storage, and there is a heap of options the CT750 has to offer. Starting the main section, we find hard drive and SSD support on the bottom removable fan bracket. This bracket can hold either 5 2.5 inch SSDs or 3 3.5 inch hard drives. All the hard drive locations support drives no matter if they have the center row of mounting holes or not. The only thing I would have liked to see is possibly some cutout holes lower down the motherboard tray to accommodate cables for these drives, rather than having to run the cables up into the supplied grommets, but in saying that this storage area would be the least used out of all the possible options. The right of the motherboard has a storage bracket which is placed in front of the side radiator location. This bracket is removable and supports the same amount of SSDs and hard drives as the previous spot. 5 SSDs or 3 hard drives. Drives are installed with the ports facing to the front of the case and won't allow for the other way around. For me, this does seem a bit weird. If using this area for storage, this will prohibit you from using the side for radiator or fans, but one neat trick is the bracket can be removed from the side location to the back chamber and I actually nearly miss this altogether. Once moved to the back chamber, the drive support stays the same, but this now frees up the side radiator location. Having this bracket around the back here also acts as a bit of a cable management bar to help hide cables. The final storage location is directly behind the motherboard tray via a removable bracket. This can hold either two 2.5 inch SSDs or one 3.5 inch hard drive. So that's a total of 12 SSDs or either seven hard drives that can be installed into the CT750. Quite impressive. Before we take a look at custom water cooling support, the CT750 is one of few cases with great AIO cooler support, especially if you have an all-in-one cooler on your CPU and an AIO for your GPU. You can have multiple all-in-one cooler options where the radiators are both cooled by outside air. I found up to a 420 all-in-one cooler will fit in the side radiator location, although it was very tight with custom EPS cables. I had to use the cutout above. I suggest routing EPS cables first before installing a radiator in this location. A 360 all-in-one cooler clears EPS cables much better. The front of the chassis easily supports a 420 all-in-one cooler and this will give you the most clearance. The rear of the chassis can fit up to a 40mm thick radiator, but AIO tubes will most likely fail on the PCI area. I recommend keeping it to a 360 all-in-one cooler for this location and here you would most likely use this spot for an all-in-one cooled GPU rather than your CPU. Move into custom water cooling and this is what the CT750 is all about. There are four main radio locations, front, side, bottom and left rear. The very top of the case has support for a 240 but my test EK P240M would foul on the front radiator bracket and could not be installed. Personally, I would just use the top for fans only. Starting with the front and this area utilizes a removable bracket which has three adjustments to go left or right. Radiators can be installed on this bracket and then dropped into place from the front. Fans can go outside this bracket inside the front panel and there's about 53 millimeters of clearance here. For radiator support, up to a 420 can be installed and clearance to the motherboard is basically unlimited. Even this EKX420M looks small in this spot. Moving to the side radiator location and technically 420 fits, I tried two brands EK and Thermaltake 420 radiators and could not get the screw holes to align properly. This is fine as the Thermaltake spec sheet does not list 420 support for custom liquid cooling, only for 420 all-in-one cooler support, which is actually correct. You can even see this on their website when you go from all-in-one cooler compatibility to custom liquid cooling compatibility, the 420 option is dropped. This is mainly due to radiators on all-in-one coolers normally aren't as wide as radiators used for custom loops. This is why you can't assume that all because someone fits an all-in-one cooler somewhere, a radiator for a custom loop will also fit. Moving down to a 360 radiator, I had no issues here and there's roughly 89mm of clearance from the side radiator location to the edge of the front radiator bracket. Take note that that's with the front radiator bracket in its far left position, allowing for max radiator thickness. Behind the side bracket, there's roughly 42mm of clearance here for either fans or something like a DDC pump sticking through from an EK FLT res combo. Take note that a D5 will not fit in this back part, DDC only. 360 radiators can also be flipped on this bracket if you wish to have rad port shooting in the back chamber for a clean tubeless look. This also works for the front and left side radiator brackets for even 420 radiators as they can be flipped with ports facing out for some crazy clean soft tubing runs. No issues here with the bracket cutout failing on rad ports. The rear radiator location or you could say the left 
looking at it from the main section, once again utilizes a similar removable bracket to the front location, but this time it only has two adjustments left or right instead of three. Clearance of fans in the outside of this bracket in between the rear cover panel is 35mm. Support in this location is up to 420 radiators, but for 420 thickness will be limited to 40mm due to the top PCI module. If you go with the vertical GPU layout which we mentioned earlier, by rotating this module, this now gives us 50mm for radiator thickness, but you'll still need to have radiator ports at the bottom regardless. Here I was now able to fit an EK P420M 44mm thick radiator with fans on the other side. 360 radiator support here is much better as being shorter we don't have to worry about the PCI module at the top and we can see with this EKX 360M 60mm thick radiator clears with the PCI module in its default position even with a push pull config. The bottom radiator location is tricky and will heavily depend on the other radiators being used at the front and rear of the chassis. This bracket is removable and supports up to a 420 and this EK P420M fits fine but by doing this the other two locations left and right can no longer support 420 radiators and even 360 radiator support in these spots are tight. A thick 360 at the bottom is a better solution as you can slide it to one side which then allows room for an NKP 420M at the front. Some good radiator configs I found was a thick 360 radiator on the side mount, a thick 420 radiator in the front with a medium sized radiator at the rear. This leaves the bottom radiator bracket for pump and res support. All these radiators are running a push pull config which is a total of 18 fans. Another option could be a 360 radiator at the side and the bottom, 420 radiator at the front with something like a 360 res combo at the rear. Two thick 360s at each end with a 360 FLT on the side and a 240 radiator at the bottom. These are just a few options but there are many many more layouts you can play around with. For pump and res support, Thermaltake have also added this pump bracket that installs over the bottom radiator bracket. This has a height of 70mm for rad and fan clearance under and for what I see, supports Thermaltake's own pump res combos best. Also, I feel this spot is a little bit too close to the front radiator, limiting support here if going with the push-pull setup. This bracket is also quite flimsy as well. Now before we take a look at the build in the CT750 which I've done, I do want to apologise as the build we're about to see is my modded build for Combitex. I don't unfortunately have a more of a stock build to show you guys what the case would look like. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to pull that one apart and then start another one from scratch. But in saying that, the rad spots are the same. Most of the case has been left the same, just the motherboard tray has been replaced and then the tube runs down. So not too much has changed. And I'm also doing a full uh, setup shot as well with like the desk. I'm actually sitting at the thermal take. This is the L desk. It's quite beefy. It's got actually three motors because it has one in the corner one in each end to make it all go up and down. So I've got a full uh, setup shot so we can see how it all looks. So let's jump in and check it out.
Alrighty guys, so that is the final build. I wanted to do a complete setup just to show you how this case looks when you've got like a full desk, the monitor, the keyboard mouse, just to see how the back of the chassis works with the rear cable management. Obviously everyone's setup is going to be different. I do only have one monitor and so on. But in saying that, I do think that cable cutout should be a little bit bigger at the back, just so people who do go with the extreme multiple monitors and so on, it is a little bit easier to feed those cables through. And as I said earlier, I didn't have a more of a stock standard build to show you guys exactly how it would look. But in saying that, the only few differences here is the back motherboard tray, which I completely scrapped. And as I said earlier, because this was for Combitex, it was for the Thermaltake booth, I couldn't really just go up the stock standard build. Those guys use some of the best models in the world. So I had to do something out there, something a little bit crazy. And that's why everything flows down into the bottom. There's all tubing underneath, which you can't see, but the rads are still in the same spot. So that gives you a bit of an idea on how this case would look with a normal build. It's just that the motherboard tray has that frosted acrylic instead of the standard white. So I'll talk a little bit more about the build uh, later on. There's some few other things, not too much to really talk about here. I really did like this case and it's kind of hard to say I did like building in it. I did play around with it first before I completely gutted it, but it was a very enjoyable case to work with. I did mention the cutout at the back should be a bit bigger because I did have to use some long cables. The keyboard cable was stock. I did not need to extend that, so that was fine. Uh, the rear motherboard I.O., so at the top for the rear I.O. on the motherboard, it is sunk down quite a lot. Now I know why Thermaltake have done that, because obviously they can't accommodate for everyone's usage for like USB sticks and so on. So if they only make the drop down a little bit, you might have USB sticks sticking up and you can't put the top panel down. So that is quite deep. And if you do have big hands, I have small hands, so it wasn't too bad reaching like network cables, USB sticks to pulling them out. But people with bigger hands, obviously it might be a little bit hard, a little bit tricky. So if you guys do unplug USB sticks all the time or you're using them, you may have to use the front and so on for those. Now, another thing, not specifically with this case, but with this orientation for GPUs, air-cooled, not water-blocked, this is air-cooled, GPUs that use a certain type of vapor chambers. I do know that some technology with the vapor chamber, not all brands, not all models, they will run hotter in this vertical layout. It's just because of the way the GPUs are being designed. I remember when the Tower 900 came out, I think that was 1080s, GTX 1080s, 1080 Ti's. Back then everything was fine, but GPU technology has changed, especially with air coolers. Uh, the orientation has stayed the same, but yet these GPUs do one quite a bit hotter. So I did want to point that out there. I don't want to shout out any names on which GPUs may run hot. I do know of some, but you guys will just have to sort of do some researching if you do go at this layout with those air cooled GPUs because they do run a little bit hotter. Now one issue I did have was the packaging material used on the CT750. Now I reached out to Thermaltake and they did update it for the CT700. That model came out a little bit later. So the packaging material used on this chassis is the old school Styrofoam. And when I opened the black version of the chassis, it was in pretty bad nick. The or One of the uh, fan blades was completely fallen apart in the case. And some of these black clips had completely fallen out and broken out the front. So I reached out to them and they said, yes, they didn't notice that. So they may be updating that on the rest of the series. So just keep in mind that the best foam is the more spongy foamy stuff, but not that rock hard styrofoam because that just doesn't work very well, especially for a case like this. And the size of it, it should come with much better foam. Now, I wanna cover why I went with EK radiators. You might be wondering, well, it's a Thermaltake case. Why didn't I go with Thermaltake rads for testing it? Well, one, they don't come in white, even though I did use Thermaltake or Thermaltake in this build and I did paint these white, but I wasn't going to paint six or seven rads for all the testing out of all of the water cooling brands there are. I don't think too many use Thermaltake rads, although there's nothing wrong with Thermaltake rads. It's just that more people are familiar with EK sizes, uh, more people use them. And then also, I do wanna use Thermaltake because if I used everything Thermaltake, people might be thinking, well, maybe this chassis is just for Thermaltake. So I wanted to use EK to show you that this case will work with more than just Thermaltake water cooling gear. So that's why I went with, uh, with the EK rads. Around the back, I can't really show you that now because I have gutted it all in this case to add this uh, frosted acrylic at the back, but around the back was a really nice treat to work with. with all those cable management uh, features, all the bits for the zip ties was just really good and there's a heap of room to work around the back. Uh, every panel is toolless, which I really like. Like the back here can just come out, 
the top. It's gonna to be loud. The top can just come out. The front can come out. Everything is just toolless. And as I said earlier, you don't have to rip this whole top off to access uh, like the, the dust filters. You don't have to rip this whole front off, which is that plastic bit to access the dust filters. You can take each little panel off as you need it. Now, one interesting area I found on the website, which was quite strange, is when you're looking at the chassis, looking at what it supports, there is an option for all-in-one cooler support, and there's an option for custom uh, liquid coolers, so something like this, custom radiators in a custom loop. Now, the website shows 420 supports for all-in-one coolers, like here, here, uh, down the bottom at the back, but when you go to custom uh, radiator support, they completely drop 420s across the whole case, no 420 support. Now to me, I think they're being a little bit too lenient. So I reached out to Thermaltake and they said they did that because some areas were a little bit tight. And as I mentioned earlier, a 420 at the bottom does prohibit a 420 on the side and the 420 at the back. But if you scrap the one at the bottom, you can still do a 420 on the back and a 420 at the front. But they didn't want any confusion. So they just dropped it completely to make it a little bit easier. And I think they've gone a little bit too easy there. I've seen some people say, hey, 420s will fit everywhere in a case, and now Thermaltake saying you can't fit any 420s at all. So I think they should say that 420 is supported quite well, because I think it's supported pretty good, but they should just say that some areas may be a little bit tight and don't expect to get a 420 in every spot here, 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 and here, because that's four, and that is not going to happen. So I just wanted to mention that. Now, one thing I did like is all the mesh panels all follow the same mesh design. The front, the top, the rear, the back here, the other back around the back side here, all has this sort of long uh, circular design, an oval, sort of a stretched oval. And I think that works quite well. It's nice and cohesive. You don't have something like hexagons at the top, uh, squares or something at the back, uh, small holes at the front. It just all works and looks really good. Now I do wanna cover the bit about the build, then I'll go over the price. So this build, as I said earlier, went to Computex uh, this year, which was 2023, and that's why I'm a little bit late in reviewing this case. I received it about two weeks before it had to be shipped out. So the priority was, do I do the build? Do I try to do the review? Obviously being Computex, I had to get the build done. It has to be something fancy, it has to look good because it's out on show, and there's a heap of awesome other builds there from a heap of modders from around the world. So basically I smashed this out in two days. I wanted to try and do something a little bit different, so I completely gutted the whole motherboard tray, uh, drilled out all the pop rivets, added about a 10 millimeter thick of frosted acrylic in the back. And as you saw, when that lights up, I've got some uh, IDB strips in the back. It just gives that really nice ambient glow and it looks really good. Now this distro down the bottom, that is not custom made. This is what I call the hockey stick. Thermaltake make this, I think it's for the P6 or the P8. It's for one of them, I'm not quite sure. It's designed to go up and across, or I think up and this way in one of their cases, but I decided to play around with it, put it down here, and it went in really good. And then I just basically went with two rads, shot everything down here, frosted tubing. Of course, the motherboard is, it's a little bit old, it's a Z690 Aqua, but I painted it all white, and it actually matched the white case really, really good. And then the fans are the new Thermaltake, uh, the Swarl Fan EX that connect together, and I do have reversed blades on them. You might be thinking, well, all of these are blowing out, which you think, because all the frames you can't see, so technically they would be blowing out, but with the reverse fan blades, they're actually blowing in, blowing in, and then out the top. So that's pretty much it on this build. I don't want to go too long on that, because if you guys were following Combitex, you probably would have seen it there. And then we have the RTX 4080, and that has the thermal tape block on as well. Now, coming down to price, the price in this case is 179 US, and that covers all of the four models. So both in white for the Air and the TG, and then both in black for the Air and the TG. That price might fluctuate here and there, but as of this video, it was 179. Now, I think that is a pretty good price for what you're getting. You get removable radiator brackets all around the front, the back, the bottom, the top, the only one, well, not really the top, sorry, the side is non-removable. The top is that 240, but actually the, the front, the rear, and then the bottom all removable, and then you get all those panels, and it's a really nice case to work in. Um, as I said in the video, it's probably, I would say, one of my top three cases for this year so far. I don't really think this would get top case for 2023, probably because of this rotated layout. I think it's not gonna be for everybody. Some people just love accessing their cable, so I probably can't get that, but I really did like working on this case. And in saying that, 
I don't think there can just be one award for the top case for 2023. I think you have to factor in like sizes, things like there needs to be a category for small form factor, uh, mid towers, and then also large towers. But I think this is definitely a contender for a large tower in that range, just mainly because of the features and the price and so on. But um, I think that's pretty much everything I covered. I just wanna thank Thermaltake for sending this out. I do apologize for being a bit late for this video. Thermaltake did hit me up and say, hey, we want you to uh, do a full review on this case. We wanna show all the water cooling uh, capabilities and so on and see how it all looks. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.